Welcome to section 14 of bacteria. This is our bacteria overview figure, and in this video we'll be discussing enterococci, which you can see right here. To represent enterococci, we've shown a big enter sign to this epic concert. Enter sounds like enterococci, so we'll be using it in this image to represent enterococci. Before we go any further, pay close attention to the background. Notice that we've included a lot of purple colors. This is to help you remember that enterococcus is a gram-positive organism. This is a gram stain of enterococcus. Notice that the organism appears purple and that it's circular shaped, hence the gram-positive classification. Okay, now notice that we've added flowers growing right next to the sewer. This is to help you remember that enterococcus is part of the normal intestinal flora. The sewer is where feces and waste go, so this can be thought of as a symbol for the intestines. And the flowers next to it represent flora of the intestines. So flowers next to the sewer for part of the normal intestinal flora. Notice that now we've added a raincoat to the image, which can be seen through the window in the ticket booth. We introduced this symbol in our strep pyogenes video, but recall that it represents the PYR test. Put your raincoat here for PYR test. Therefore, the presence of the raincoat in this image should help you remember that enterococcus is PYR positive. Next, notice that we've added a guy inside of the concert who's pouring some salt on his popcorn. This guy with the salt shaker is a symbol for 6.5% sodium chloride. The symbol is pretty intuitive, right? The chemical structure of salt is sodium chloride, so the salt shaker represents that enterococcus grows in 6.5% sodium chloride. If you've ever been to a concert, you probably recall a lot of flashing lights and loud noises. So as you can see here, this concert has a similar atmosphere with green flashing lights emanating from the stage. We introduced the green looking gamma ray in the last video, but recall that it's our symbol for gamma hemolysis. So enterococcus exhibits gamma hemolysis on blood agar. This is a figure of the three types of hemolysis, which we discussed in more detail in section seven, which was our video on listeria. Again, remember that gamma hemolysis looks like this. Notice that there is no hemolysis surrounding the colony. So remember, enterococcus is gamma hemolytic. Okay, let's return to the image. Notice that now we've added some spilled green soda to the image. The soda is going down the hill and surrounding the flowers next to the sewer. The fact that there are a bunch of flowers growing right next to the green soda should help you remember that enterococcus grows in bile. Don't get this idea confused with the bile solubility test. These are two totally separate ideas. The bile solubility test is discussed more in the video on the Viardans group streptococci and the video on strep pneumoniae. And this has to do with whether or not an alpha colony on blood agar dissolves in the presence of bile salts. So remember, enterococcus grows well in bile. So who made this big green mess in the first place? As you can see, the guy getting punched in the abdomen dropped the soda. Poor guy, you can see him holding onto his belly in agony. This guy getting punched here is to help you remember that enterococcus causes abdominal wound infections. So punched in the belly for abdominal wound infections. But why is he getting beaten up by the guy in the red shirt? Ah, he's defending his girlfriend. Maybe the guy in the blue shirt wasn't so innocent after all. Looks like he intentionally spilled green soda on the poor girl's dress, which made her boyfriend pretty upset. The spilled fluid on the girl's crotch is here to help you remember that enterococcus can cause urinary tract infections. So fluid on the girl's crotch for UTI. Okay, now let's turn our attention to the bottom of the image. Notice that we've added a car that's trying to get through the ticket booth. Just like in our other videos, the car here represents endocarditis. So enterococcus causes endocarditis. The guy in the ticket booth is clearly charging everyone a fee to get into the concert, including this guy in the car. Fee sounds kind of like fecium and fecalis, so this is here to help you remember that the two species in the enterococcus genus are enterococcus fecium and enterococcus fecalis. So fee for enterococcus fecium and enterococcus fecalis. Next, notice that we've added a big buff dude in the backstage area who's eating a banana right next to the banana tree. Banana sounds like biliary, so we'll be using banana trees in our images to represent the biliary tree. In this image, the banana tree should help you remember that enterococcus causes biliary tree infections. You probably already could have deduced this based on the fact that enterococcus grows well in bile, but we've included the banana tree here to make this extra memorable for you. Okay, now let's talk about treatment. As you can see, now we've added the star singer to the image. In order to be heard, the singer obviously needs some big amps. So you'll notice that we've also included some big amps on the sides of the stage. Just like in our other videos, amps represent ampicillin. So remember, enterococcus can be treated with ampicillin. We've also added a strip of tape between the audience and the singer. This type of tape is notoriously used at crime scenes and is called police line tape, but you may see it in other areas that are off limits to the public. Line tape sounds like linazolid, 
so we've included it in this image to help you remember that linazolid can be used to treat enterococcus. Finally, we've added this van in the backstage area. In our other videos, we've used a van to represent vancomycin. Also notice that we've shown two big buff bouncer guys. One of them is folding his arms and protecting the van, as if he's ready to put up a fight with anyone who attempts to come backstage uninvited. I guess you could say the buff guys are pretty resistant to any unwanted visitors. The fact that they are next to the van should help you think of vancomycin resistance. So enterococcus is vancomycin resistant. Okay, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 72-year-old male is admitted to the hospital for community-acquired pneumonia. A urinary catheter is placed upon admission because the patient is unable to ambulate to the bathroom. After two days of appropriate treatment, his symptoms begin to resolve. However, on the third day of admission, he begins to experience dysuria, frequency, and urgency. A urine culture grows gram-positive cocci in pairs and chains. Antibiotic sensitivity testing reveals that the organism is resistant to vancomycin. The causal organism will most likely demonstrate which of the following. A. Beta hemolysis on blood agar. B. PYR positivity. C. Absence of growth in hypertonic or 6.5% saline. Or D. Water and oxygen production in the presence of hydrogen peroxide. Okay, from the question stem, hopefully you noticed that this patient had a urinary catheter placed and then experienced dysuria, frequency, and urgency. This is alluding to the idea that the patient developed a nosocomial urinary tract infection. The urine culture confirms this and states that gram-positive cocci in pairs and chains were grown. The UTI morphology of the organism and its ability to resist vancomycin are highly suggestive of enterococcus. Therefore, the correct answer is B, PYR positivity. From the image, recall that the raincoat right here represents PYR positivity, so enterococcus exhibits PYR positivity. If we go back to the question, you can see that A is wrong because enterococcus is gamma hemolytic, not beta hemolytic. C is wrong because enterococcus grows well in the presence of 6.5% sodium chloride. So just to clarify, 6.5% hypertonic saline refers to sodium chloride, and we know that enterococcus grows well in that medium, so C is wrong. D is describing the catalase test, and enterococcus is catalase negative, so D is wrong. So again, the correct answer is B, PYR positivity.